Hello everyone. Around 2700 years before the dark portal opened up, some of the boldest sailors amongst the people of Gilneas, they set sail into the open waters around their city. In time, they discovered a large island to the south that was rich with metal ores and other valuable natural resources. Some of the sailors decided to stay on this island and they founded a mighty marine time outpost named Kaltiris. Yet the lands were not completely unpopulated. When Kaltiris was first settled, their people encountered a savage group of warmongering barbarians. They called themselves the Drust, and Drasvar was their ancestral home. It was from here that they launched endless raids into their fledgling hamlets. The Kaltirans tried to go for peace when they landed, but the Drust they went to war immediately. This carried on for countless years until the ancestors of House Waycrest, they decided that something had to be done. When peace wasn't an option, the early Kaltirans started to fight back. The Waycrest have always been a hardy folk, but the Drust magic, it was strong. Led by Korak Tool, the Drust used their druidic powers for dark rituals and massive damage, but some amongst the Drust, they were not actually down with what Korak Tool was doing. These foreign speakers, as we call them, they actually joined the Kaltiran society, and they taught their ancient ways to those who heard the call of the wilds. For generations, they have been the guardians of balance in nature, the keepers of the cycle of nature, of life and of death. But despite these new teachings, the Kaltirans were losing their war. In the end, it was their scholars that turned the tide. They began to uncover weaknesses within the Drust's magic. They compiled what they learned into a treatise on weapons and tactics that could be used to defeat the barbarians. The Order of Embers was the name given to those who took up these arms against the Drust. Using the tools and methods uncovered by the scholars, they were able to counter the Drust's magic and ensure their victory in the war. They even pushed the great leader Gorak Tool into retreat. When he ran out of living warriors, he created a brand new army out of stone constructs. But not even they were able to bring him the victory that he desired. Aaron Waycrest, still a colonel at the time leading the final assault, he stabbed Gorak Tool. While the stories of this event, they always said that he killed him, Gorak Tool did not die. Wounded and broken to be sure, but he wasn't dead. Gorak Tool and his followers, they retreated into what they called the Blighted Lands. This is a new area and still wrapped in quite a lot of mystery. It reminds me personally a lot of Stranger Things, but honestly at this point, it could also be connected to anything. Really, it could be the Emerald Nightmare, the Old Gods, the Shadowlands. The details are still very unclear. What we do know is that Gorak Tu and his followers, they hung out in the Blighted Lands, they tried to regain their strength and are figuring out a way to return to the physical world. But with the victory earned, Aram Waycrest was given the title of Lord, and from that point on, it would be his bloodline that would rule all of Drasvar. Kaltiris would come together, unified under the leadership of Admiral Dalen Proudmoor, but his defeated Fadamor, it caused things to change. To the west lies Drasvar, a mountainous region providing most of the kingdom's ore and some of our toughest warriors. House Waycrest has been a loyal supporter of Proudmoor's rule for centuries, but their recent absence from council meetings has given rise to troubling rumours. It's these troubling rumours that send us over into Drasvar, where we eventually meet up with Lucille Waycrest, who's the daughter of Arthur and Meredith, rulers of the area. She's placed on trial for witchcraft, about to face the noose, but we're able to convince the townsfolk that she's not the one responsible. Now, throughout our questing experience, we uncover that there's definitely merit to the rumors, and the corruption of the land goes deep. Village after village, we find covens, witches, sacrifices, rituals. Well, if you really want to know what Drusfar is like, there's really only one quest that we need to follow. Our poor little village is dead. All the people have gone stiff or fled. There is no more noise. Except me and my toys, just like all the dark birdies said. Yay! This is gonna be the best tea party ever! Let's find the other guests. Chunksy, you know Miss Mary doesn't allow you in the house. You track mud everywhere. Oh, Mr. Munchykins, you were hungry, weren't you? <laughs> Come along now, it's time for tea. Naughty Mayor Striggs, always running away from your responsibilities to the townsfolk. Well, you can't run anymore. Smoochums loves the woods. I'm going to make sure the doggies didn't get him.
Miss Mary turned her back on us while seeking wicked power. She brought death upon our village, turned the forest dark and dour. Sam kept his farm well tended. To livestock he was kind. Into the woods Sam banished. Now who will tend his swine? Mr. Hayes was said to have a soul so sweet and nice. How sad the kind man's heart became a witch's sacrifice. <laughs> The Dark Ones called to Annie, but from evil she refrained. No surprise to anyone, she ended up in chains. This land is cursed. Let's go, let's go! It's time for the tea party! Up here! This is gonna be the best tea party ever! Great! Sit down so we can start the party. With you and Smoochums helping, I can call the last guest. Doggy, play nice with our guests. We wouldn't want them to leave hungry. Or at all. Good heavens! What was that? That thing? Even rotten crops, Regal. I can't thank you enough, Mainlander. I'm gonna get as far away from this place as possible. If I were you, I'd do the same. Good luck. It's probably some really solid advice to follow, but instead we join Lucille and her forces to figure out what is going on and how we can stop it. A good place to start, there will be the Forgotten Lodge, which is said to contain the answers to our questions and possibly our survival against the coven. I can't believe we're here. My father used to tell me stories about this place. It contains an ancient secret of our house from back when the Waycrests first settled this land. We just need to find the entrance. That's it. The way is opening. Wait, what was that? Look out! Oh, I'm sorry, Mainlander. The coven's magic must be disturbing the spirits of the ancient Drust. We'll have to be careful. My ancestors fought against stone constructs, much like these, in their war against the Drust. The Waycrests have always been hearty folk, but the Drust's magic was strong. We were losing the war. In the end, it was our scholars that turned the tide. Oh, thank you, Mainlander. I thought that one had me for a moment. As I was saying, the tide of the war shifted when our scholars began to uncover weaknesses in the Drust's magic. They compiled what they learned into a treatise on weapons and tactics that could be used to defeat the Barbarians. Armed with this knowledge, our men started driving the Drust back into their mountain holds. They kept that knowledge hidden here, safe from unwanted hands. Hmm, it looks like some rubble blocks our path ahead. Can you clear the way? Wait, something's not right. Mainlander, behind you! I've never seen a construct that big before. Are you all right? Oh, what am I saying? Of course you're all right. I can see it'll take more than a few stones to bring you down. Come along. The book should be in here. Here it is. The last resting place of the Order of Embers. Are you ready to revive ancient history? With the knowledge of the ancestors, we are going to reignite the Order of Embers. Studying the tome, it takes a little bit of time, but it's definitely worth it, as Lucille figures out the coven's weakness for rowan wood, alchemical fire, and weapons of silver. A small test run, it proves that the information is solid, as the coven has already infiltrated our town. Time to add more able bodies to our ranks to wield these newfound weapons. Marshal Everett Reed, Captain Cleardon, and Sing Yorick, Lieutenant Sternhide, and Sing Mace, and Falcon and Notley, they become our inquisitors for the order. There were words of induction somewhere in the tome. Let me see. Ah, here we are. <clears throat> Brothers and sisters, today you become the searing fire that burns away the darkness. Today, 
You become the shining blade that cuts through the wicked. Today you become the beacon of hope against the endless foe. By the authority of House Waycrest, I name you Inquisitors of the Order of Embers. Now, before we depart, I'll need someone to undertake a special task for the Order. Any recommendations, Marshal? Captain Cleardorn, uh, excuse me, Inquisitor Cleardorn is as reliable as they come. I'm sure she can handle anything you need her for. Thank you, sir. What do you require of me, milady? If we wish to defeat the Coven for good, we will need more than silver. We will need fire. Take this recipe for alchemical fire to Master Ashton in Falconhurst. He will know what to make of it. Yes, ma'am. The rest of us will need to prepare for the ride to Corlane. Marshal, I understand you have a plan of attack. Yes. We ride out on the mainlander's command. We need to get our hands on some of the delicious alchemical fire. And there's only one man suited for the job for creating it. We're in Ashton at Falconhurst. The town is already under attack by the coven, so we help them out. We even help out the master alchemist with creating his concoction. But the covens, they kidnap him, which means that our mission becomes a rescue mission. Something big is going on here. The coven is working on a mighty ritual, and it's at the Crimson Forest, where we discover how dire things really are. There! A door! In the tree! Is no one going to mention that massive wicker golem? Because I feel it should be mentioned. One crisis at a time, my boy! Within goal enough, we discovered that the witches have been working hard on bringing Gorak Tool into our worlds. Enough! Interlopers! You meddle in affairs beyond your ken! You cannot stop me from reclaiming what is mine! We've definitely wounded him though, otherwise he wouldn't have retreated. But the threats of the Lord of the Blighted Lands, it's still very much a thing. On the back of a crimson wood demolisher, we crash through the coven's forces and we get the hell out of there. Ashton has been saved and the power of fire has been acquired for the Order of Embers. Time to push forward into Carlane. This is where Lucille's family manor stands and we discover who this mother is. The leader all these coven witches keep talking about. The mother is quite literally a mother. Lucille's mother to be precise. Lady Waycrest has fallen under the sway of Gorak Tool. A vision of the past shows us that there's always been a hint of darkness within her mother, as she had Lucille's fiancé murdered on the day of her wedding. No daughter of hers would marry a common merchant, everything for the sake of their family. Yet, when her husband fell ill, Meredith called out to any power in the world that could save him, and Gorak Tool answered the call. He promised, for a price, that death would never separate the couple. Lady Waycrest accepted the bargain. She entered the dark bargain with the Lord of the Blighted Lands, and she started to secretly recruit girls for her newly formed coven. The ways of the Drust were spread. Dark, vile rituals, with the ultimate goal of bringing the Drust to the realm of the living. When Corlane was under their control, their darkness spread out over the lands of Drasvar, which eventually led to her own daughter nearly being executed by the superstitious people. Now Lucille and the Order, they don't know who is responsible quite yet. It's time to charge forward, clear the way to Waycrest Manor, and figure out what is going on. Inquisitors! This is our chance to rescue Lord and Lady Waycrest, and put an end to this insufferable coven! Stick close, and do not stop your advance until we breached the manor gates! For House Waycrest! Keep moving, we've got this. Go for the eyes, Winston. You screeched at the wrong woman, witch. Mother! We'll cover the flanks. Stay with Lucille and the Marshal. Him. 
Be appreciative, girl. Not only is your father alive and well, but he will soon be lord of all Kul'Tiras. Come join us, child. Keep away from her, you heartless witch! Why, Marshal, that's no way to talk to a lady. I shall teach you some manners! Seal to my quarters after you dispose of these pests. Come, Arthur. As you wish, Mother. I obey. No! This is not right! Fight it, Marshal! Dearest Lucy, I have failed you. I'm sorry. No, Marshal. No. Mother, what have you done? Marshal Everett Reed was taken by the mother. Lucille can't believe that she is the leader of the coven, but time to mourn, that will have to come later, as the Rasvar is far from safe. Lord and Lady Waycrest, the heart of corruption of the land, and Goraktul, they're waiting for us inside within Waycrest Manor. Inquisitors, the final battle is upon you. May the winds be at your back. Aye, ma'am. We'll put the coven in the ground. Inquisitors, on me! Glory to House Waycrest! I will join you inside, Inquisitor. I may not be of much use in combat, but my mother must be brought to justice, and I must be there to see it through. For my father, and for Drustvar. And that's the story. We'll save for later. I'm really hoping that eventually we'll find out more about the Blighted Lands and the Trust. Maybe something that they can actually add with the Kaltiran allied race recruitments. But that's something for the future. If you're interested in more information that we know right now, then by all means, check out the Pride of Kaltiras video. It has some really juicy bits. For now though, thank you very much for watching everyone. Subscribe if you like my videos. Leave a like if you enjoyed this one. And until next time guys. See ya!